So probably about a month ago now, um, the folks who made the NVIDIA Stalagan model um, released a PyTorch version. And there's always been sort of a, a PyTorch version that existed. I believe it's um, on the Rosenality um, account. Uh, but the NVIDIA folks went ahead and made their own official version. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit today about why you might use that over, say, the TensorFlow version. Um, so if you're not familiar with TensorFlow or PyTorch, they're basically two separate uh, frameworks for doing machine learning. Um, PyTorch is more or less managed by Facebook. TensorFlow is more or less managed by Google. Um, say of that whatever you will. Uh, but essentially, I, from my experience, or sort of like reading the community, PyTorch tends to be a little bit easier to use. Um, it's a little bit more ubiquitous, and TensorFlow tends to be, I don't know, I guess from maybe my experience, like more production focused. Um, so, you know, again, for Google, it's more for like, you know, building in all these crazy models into their systems. Um, so when StyleGAN first came out, having it in TensorFlow was probably fine. I mean, it didn't necessarily matter. Um, but as it, as TensorFlow kept adopting new versions, um, StyleGAN kind of felt like it was falling behind, right? It was, it was forced to be in uh, TensorFlow 1 versus TensorFlow 2 being the more common version. Um, they started to add a bunch of different stuff to sort of more or less hack their way around um, some of the limitations of TensorFlow. And I really think um, with StyleGAN 2 ADA, uh, the, the most recent version of the NVIDIA repo, um, you really saw TensorFlow sort of struggle. Um, if you go through the notes in that repo, uh, you'll see that, you know, they had a bunch of hacks in there to make it work on multi-GPUs. You had to use an older version of TensorFlow even with that. Um, I personally found that there were like uh, memory leakages using the augmentation system. There's just a bunch of issues. Um, and it was sort of just like kind of clear that maybe like TensorFlow wasn't really the right tool for this. Um, so the NVIDIA folks went ahead and made this PyTorch version. Um, and I actually think like beyond just the fact that TensorFlow, the TensorFlow model sort of felt like it was falling behind, um, I think there's actually even more version, more reason to use the PyTorch version going forward. Um, the first is that many, many of the tools you'll find that uh, do um, feature extraction or feature exploration or network bending or other things are already built into the PyTorch version. Um, so the hope is that, you know, I would assume going forward, like there'll be a little bit more um, connection between those tools or it'll be easier to sort of interface between those. Um, if you've seen the video where I sort of, um, you know, uh, I guess take the Rosenality fork and like convert a pickle file to the PyTorch model, it's like, you know, that was an extra step. It required additional like libraries and stuff and it made it kind of annoying. Um, so all that is more or less solved now. I mean, I think there's gonna be some issues um, still with sort of, this still produces .pkl files and um, the other models are still looking for .pt files. So we'll still have to work out some of that. Um, but uh, there's actually a really, really amazing, two, two amazing things I would say about the PyTorch model. The first is that um, you no longer have to make TF records. Um, so probably one of the more annoying parts of getting started um, in, during, in like starting to train a StyleGAN model was having to generate these huge, massive TF records files. Um, that is no longer the case. Today, what you do is you just go ahead and make a zip file. So I've started a very rough collab file, and, I, and we can just sort of walk through the, the process of this. Um, yeah, it's literally, there's no documentation here whatsoever. Um, and in fact, they don't even show where you make a zip. So like the, the nice part of this is um, it's, now this is the amount of steps you really need to get uh, up and running. Before you used to have to like make data set tools, uh, it would generate a file that was like 10 gigabytes if you weren't using the raw system and all that became an issue. So now you don't even need that. You just need a zip of JPEGs or PNGs, um, works with either of those. So you just zip up a, a folder of images and then you point, um, whereas previously you were pointing your data set toward um, you know, a TF records folder, now you just point it directly at the zip file. Um, and that just sort of takes over from there. So that is a huge plus because having me have, like me personally having to explain TF records and folks and things to people was very annoying. Um, and it was pretty clear that like, you didn't really have to do it. Like a lot of other models were moving around that and that sort of thing. So I'm glad they've removed that. It's really awesome. Um, I would say the other really, really huge benefit, um, and this is mentioned sort of briefly um, in here, well, let's just see, um, 25%. So it's sort of like buried in this repo, um, but there is a huge, huge performance bump to the, using the PyTorch version. Um, I'm trying to see if they, where exactly this is listed. Um, but there is a, like, so, you know, again, different people will tell you different things about PyTorch and TensorFlow. Um, in my experience, however, um, you know, generating these um, models in PyTorch, I saw about a 25% um, speed up. And that's, that's huge. So, you know, if you're spending a, a week 
um, training a model or training a model, um, that means it's what like the math is probably like what one and a half days less. So now you're down to under six days uh, versus a seven day training. Um, so that's you know one way less painful. Um, two, it's using a lot less energy, and uh, that's important you know for ecological factors. Like we shouldn't we shouldn't discount that. Like that is big. Um, you know these models are not the most eco friendly, and anywhere we can shave time off that is really huge. And then lastly, if you are um, you know if you are training this not on collab, like if you're paying by the hour. Um, to rent a GPU, um, that hour and a half, dif- or that sorry, that day and a half difference uh, is going to save you a lot of money, right? Um, and even with Collab, like you know, Collab's ten bucks a month, but like you'd rather move on and use use that uh, service for some other things. So um, this is the number one reason why I recommend if you're going to train stuff, train in PyTorch. Um, the another nice thing is that the the GPU memory is actually smaller for the smaller GPU footprint, which again. Um, translates to less energy usage. It's more eco-friendly, like that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, number one, like I think just those leaps alone uh, between the um, training time, the GPU memory usage, and like removing the data set tools um, mess um, makes the PyTorch version 100% the way to go. Um, the challenge is now that like, uh, as I'm sure you know, all of the tools I built in are built into the TensorFlow version. So it's going to take me a couple weeks to just sort of get everything moved over. I've started in this repo here, um, and I'll link to this um, in the video description. Um, so we're, we're slowly making moves. Uh, you know, I'm starting to add some things. Um, I have to learn a little bit more about how the PyTorch model works, so some stuff might be a little bit slower. Um, if you're interested in adding PRs, like please feel free. Um, I think that the way that they that the libraries are built um, by the NVIDIA folks is that it's pretty um, it's pretty easy to swap stuff in and out. Um, right now, I've really just focused on sort of the training methods and things, um, but I hope in the next week or two to get to uh, some of the image and video generation, which I'll get to you know pretty soon. Um, so you know, for now, what I'll do is I'll link to my repo. Um, I'll also link to this collab notebook if you just want to get started. Uh, as you can tell, this is very poorly documented, um, but I did already sort of catch a couple of things that um, at least previously they weren't really telling you about uh, in the PyTorch model. Um, so this should you should just be able to like set this up immediately and start it running. Um, and collab pretty quickly. Um, so I'll probably do another full demo of like how to use this um, once I've built out the library a little bit more. Um, but in the meantime, you can get started training pretty much overnight uh, with this. So um, zip up those files and start training. Um, so I just want to quickly like highlight some of the great things about this new model. Um, and again, I'll probably have more details and more things to follow. Um, so I hope you get to use this. Let me know if you run any issues. Um, please drop me a note on YouTube or in my Slack channel, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.